Hello, everybody. Chris Gallagher here, The Preacher's Pen. Thank you for stopping by and checking out our Bible study this week on Philippians chapter 3. Now, if you are not familiar with what we're doing this year, is we're taking one chapter of the Bible and we're studying it throughout this week. Then next week, we'll move into another chapter. And they're going to be random chapters all throughout the year. So far, we've talked about John chapter 4, and we've talked about Psalm 23. And now we're digging into Philippians chapter 3. So if you would like to join us, you can. Now, yesterday, which was January 16th, was a Monday, we always begin that week by reading the chapter that we're going to be studying. And we happen to be reading that chapter, and it's one that's very familiar to us yesterday. Now, I know that it seems weird to start in the middle of a book, but that's what we're doing in the book of Philippians. We may come back later and talk about chapter 4, chapter 2, or even chapter 1, but we're going to start in chapter 3. Now, let me give you some background before we continue. First of all, in chapter 1, Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, and he was encouraging them. Paul's a great encourager. He's been through a lot in his life, some of those that we'll mention here in a moment. But he's been through a lot. He's been through a lot of storms, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of ins and outs, and a lot of problems. And one of the things is, is he tells the church to keep preaching Jesus. There were actually some individuals who were seeking to preach Jesus to hurt Paul. And Paul's response was pretty unique. He says to continue to preach Jesus, even if it hurts him, as long as Jesus is proclaimed. In chapter 2, Paul tells the church to be united. As you look out for the interests of others, or excuse me, as you look out for your interests, also look out for the interest of others. It becomes very important for Paul to see that the church is going to be united because he knows that one day we're all going to stand before Jesus. In fact, he says that every knee will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. Which leads us to chapter 3. At the beginning of chapter 3, he tells them to rejoice. He says, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord, because to write the same things to you is no trouble for me, and it's safe. Paul knows that the church needs great encouragement, because he knows the early church has gone through a lot of persecution. They've gone through a lot of problems. And to overcome those problems, they need to have their minds set on things above, as he writes to the church in Colossae, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. But he also knows that they need steady commitments, that they need some things that are going to make a difference in their life. So he brings to them some pretty powerful words. And the words that he brings them are actually quite unique because he says in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 2, he reminds them to look out for the dogs, to look out for evildoers, and to look out for those who mutilate the flesh. There were individuals in his life who were causing trouble. They were going to be trouble for the church. They were going to bring difficulties upon the church. And the reason is, is because they wanted to go backwards instead of forwards. In fact, if you dig into the next verse in chapter 3 and verse 3, Paul says, For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and the glory in Christ and put no confidence in the flesh. See, in the Old Testament, we know of circumcision. Now, if you need to know what that is, we can talk later. But it was something that was going to be a covenant with Abraham. Now, there was a spiritual component to that as well. It wasn't just fleshly, if you will. It was also spiritual. So there's a spiritual part of this as well. That's why Paul can say, For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God, the glory of Christ, and put no confidence in the flesh. There's a lot of people who put confidence in the flesh. They put confidence in, shall I say, spiritual checkboxes. Have I attended church? I, I've attended church on Sunday morning Bible study, Sunday morning worship, and, and Wednesday night. And, and, and I've read 40 chapters this week or seven chapters this week, or I've read a couple books this week. And we look at that sometimes and we say, you know, they're checking the boxes. And there were individuals in the Bible who did that. In fact, in Matthew chapter 15, there's the story of the Pharisees. They had the traditions of men higher than the Word of God. And Jesus talks to them about that. And he talks to them about they worshiped God in vain because they were just after the things of men. They were just checking those boxes. When we come to worship, as we talked about in John chapter 4 at the beginning of this year, are we worshiping God in spirit and in truth? See, Paul tells the church here, he says that we worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus, and we put no confidence in the flesh. Our confidence is not worldly, it's spiritually, it's godly. 
knowing that God has sent Jesus to die for our sins. But where is our confidence? What are we doing about confidence, about feeling that inner strength that we're going to have? Where do we find the source of our confidence? And that's what Paul is telling the church. In fact, he goes on to say this. He says, if anyone has confidence in the flesh, I have more. And Paul lists those reasons. So let's dig into our study a little bit, but let's ask this question. Where do you have confidence? Do you have confidence in the flesh? Just think about it for a moment. Are we in the spiritual check boxes? You know, we attended church all this year. We attended church. We never missed a service. But is your heart in it? See, in Matthew chapter 15, the Pharisees had their hearts apart from God. They were separated because their hearts were in the things of man and not in the things of God. So we have to worship God in truth, but we also have to worship Him with who we are as individuals. So I would ask you the question, as you think about your worship, or if you think about your entire life, is your confidence in the flesh or is your confidence in God? Because here's what Paul says. He says, I was circumcised the eighth day of the tribe of Israel, or excuse me, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew as to the Hebrews. Paul is saying, I had good stock is what old school folks would say. I have good stock. means he came from a really, really good family. But he goes on. He says, as to keeping the law, I was a Pharisee. As to zeal, I was a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, I was blameless. Paul says, I've got this entire spiritual checklist in my life. And I've checked every single one of those boxes. And you can't hold anything against me. But then he says these words, and we'll dig a little bit into this as we go throughout this week. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Those spiritual checkboxes, while they are important, while they may seem to be as a a priority in our life, whether it's um, church attendance or it's things like that, those those are fruits of the actions that, that, that we go through At the core, at the center, we need to have Jesus. Do you have Jesus? Because Paul says, once again, whatever gain I had, whatever good things I was checking off the list, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. He says, because my confidence, while those are good things, my confidence was in physical instead of spiritual. It's just like over the past few days, there's been a lot of people watching football. And they'll put a lot of confidence in their team. They'll put a lot of encouragement and they'll talk to the television and they'll even pray that their team wins. And they'll go through this great motivation, but then the kicker misses a kick by a foot. It's a foot to the right or a foot to the left. And he says, and they go, oh, season's over, can't believe it. They get very discouraged because their confidence was in that one act, was in that one thing. We know what it's like to put confidence in the flesh and confidence in worldly desires. They, they, they may not work out. They're probably not going to work out. But confidence in God is what matters. That's why Paul is such a unique individual. As we get down into chapter 3, verses 12 through 14 in a couple days, you'll see the uniqueness of Paul as he brings forth these thoughts of, I'm, I'm still continuing. I'm not there. See, his spiritual checklist that he mentions here, or his physical checklist that he mentions, he thought he was already there. But now he says, I've put those things behind to know Christ. And the more I know him, the more I want to be like him. It's this continual progression towards the things of Jesus. So I would ask you the question today. Are you continually progressing in your knowledge of Christ? Not just in your actions, your actions are important, but in your knowledge of of Christ. I would ask you to think about that. And as we dig into this study a little bit more throughout the week, you'll see some of these things grow. But thanks for being here today. Thanks for being part of our study. As always, you can find us on social media at Preacher's Pen. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Preacher's Pen, instagram.com forward slash Preacher's Pen, twitter.com forward slash Preacher's Pen. You can check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash and put the at symbol Preacher's Pen and on Rumble rumble.com forward slash preachers pen. Hope that you're having a great day. I hope that you'll come back and be with us. Read Philippians chapter three this week and be a part of that. Don't forget, check out our podcast. 
that is going to arrive at anchor.fm forward slash preachers pen tomorrow. But you can always check out our website, preacherspen.org. We'd love to have you a part of our mailing list that goes out tomorrow on Wednesday. And we would encourage you to start creating better days today for a better life tomorrow. Be blessed. Have a great day. We look forward to talking to you soon.